Now you've seen ggmap in action, let's talk more about what it is doing and how you can alter its output. Here's the code you use to grab a map of Corvallis. You probably noticed when you ran get map, it printed some messages to the console. These messages give you an idea of what get map is doing. It's querying the Google, Google Maps API and asking for a terrain map. In get map, the source and type of map is controlled by the map type and source arguments. For example, the default is to download a terrain map from Google. To see the available options for the map type and source arguments, you can take a look at the help for get map. In the usage section, you'll find all the possibilities. The terrain, terrain background, satellite, road map, and hybrid map types come from Google. Stamen Maps also has a terrain type, in addition to watercolor, terrain labels, toner, and toner variations. The source OSM refers to open street maps and only has one map type, so it doesn't need to be specified. As an example, we could instead ask for the toner 2010 type from Stamen Maps. You'll play with these variants in the following exercises. The ggmap function also has some useful arguments, in particular the base layer argument, which is best explained by example. Recall our original plot of sales using ggplot2. We specified the data and the x and y position aesthetics in the ggplot call. To translate this plot to use ggmap, we moved the data and aesthetics to the geom point call. This allowed us to swap out the ggplot2 call with the ggmap call and have our points sit on top of our map. The downside of moving the data and aesthetics is any subsequent layers also need to specify the data and aesthetics, and some things, like faceting, just won't work. The base layer argument is designed to solve this problem. We can specify our original ggplot call as the base layer argument, and ggmap will use this to specify the default data and aesthetics for all subsequent layers. We get the benefit of having a map background and the advantage of our usual ggplot2 specification, which, for example, means we can now facet on a variable in our sales data without any problems. The extent and map range arguments can also be useful when the map and data don't quite share the same range. Extent controls how much of the plotting area the map takes up, and map range whether the map or the data should control the plotting limits. You'll see an example of these in action in the final section of the chapter.